so good afternoon uh, we'll start uh, this session we will discuss about uh, a, another form of a regression line a regression method that is what we call the multiple linear regression okay so what is the difference between uh, linear regression i mean simple linear regression and multi multiple linear regression and what assumptions uh, we have to take care, take care of and uh, then how to build a model how to have a graphical view uh, uh, of a multiple re linear regression data okay all these things will be discussed and then how best we can understand the model and what is the importance of model parameters how to understand the beta coefficients once the model is fitted that and all we'll discuss point by point okay first let me show uh, you that how a multiple regression can be uh, can be viewed that is i'll show this yeah now this is one example of multiple linear regression see a simple linear regression is nothing but simple bivariate data suppose if we consider only this x1 that is you want to estimate the mean arterial blood pressure that is whether you have whether what is the hypertension level of an individual and you are using only let us take a measure of stress okay you want to estimate using measure of stress uh, you have to estimate you wish to estimate the mean arterial blood pressure then when you have the combination like x1 y with respect to x6 that is it is called a simple linear regression having one independent variable on the right hand side of the equation is called simple linear regression okay when two or more variables let us take now i am adding i am adding x5 now this will become two variable linear model okay from here two or more when we have two or more independent variables independent variables are denoted as with the capital letter x dependent variable is with y okay when two or more independent variables are included in the model then that particular model is called multiple linear regression that means you are trying to estimate the average mean arterial blood pressure using a set of independent variables so these independent variables are also called predictor variables which will help to predict the mean arterial blood pressure okay this y or mean arterial blood pressure is also called as response variable okay right so now here the present data is having six independent variables this is for just make you understand what is the setup of independent variable this multiple regression when we start with our code we will understand that how the data should be loaded and what how to pick picture depict the graphical presentation of the scatter plot because in the morning session what we have seen that we have uh, wing length and we have age in days wing length in centimeters now we wanted to predict the wing length given particular age information so what we had is very simple the way to have it is it's a bivariate plot so we generated a scatter plot taking age on x axis and uh, wing length on y axis but here that simple case will not come across because you have six independent variables and one dependent variable now the scatter plot is not only for x1 to y it is also for x2 to y x3 to y x4 to y x5 to y and x6 to y so all pairwise scatter plot should be generated because it is a combination of multiple predictor variables to estimate or predict y okay but another point to be noted that what what is the relation between a pair of independent variables also so today we are addressing one simple way of uh, understanding multiple linear regression because multiple linear regression or a linear regression models with multiple predictors is a huge topic okay because uh, today we will understand only one part that is how to fit the data how to understand the model coefficients and how to select the important variables out of the given set of 
independent variables that alone we choose because there are some other topic like multicollinearity there are some other topic like residual plots diagnostics of the multiple linear regression and uh, many many other criteria are available to understand and dummy variable concept different different segments are there but today keeping in view to make aware uh, to give an exposure for the graduate students that how what is the difference uh, what is the major differences between simple regression and multiple regression this is a kind of a kick start for them to understand oh this is way we have to understand the multiple regression and what are the main uh, functions that has to be written and how to understand each output of the multiple regression at the basic level okay now with this introduction let me start uh, making you understand the the r code which is to be uh, uh, used for generating multiple linear regression now one of the participant has raised a very important question that i am addressing today that how to take a particular sheet of excel when you have when you have multiple sheets of data sets what i did is i stored two to three varieties of data sets in one excel book workbook okay and i named them as htn hypertension sparrow mlr dental and so on so forth let us take four to five data sets i have in one workbook with multiple sheets three to four multiple sheets okay now i have to call a particular data set which is the purpose of multiple linear regression okay two ways we can do but prior to that you have to load a library called read excel you have to load a library called read excel that is how to install a library install dot packages written double quotation read excel comma dependencies is equal to true okay now i am the function to call the required file the function to call required file is read underscore excel okay read underscore excel is equal to this is the working directory what i have and this is the excel workbook the main file name data sets i have stored all the data in one particular excel workbook and named it as a data set. okay it is a repository for me a small repository in my laptop in my directory now i want to work with multiple number in which sheet the data is stored that is better to give the sheet number sheet 1 sheet 2 sheet 3 sheet 4 if the data is in sheet 10 you can get sheet 10 now you don't know the number but you know the what is the sheet name on what name you have saved the sheet you can call that sheet by just giving the sheet name within double quotations okay so i should thank that participant for their this question for this beautiful and uh, new learning of how to uh, read an excel sheet which is within a workbook into the r environment now one more question may arise to you that why can't we open a read.csv with which has multiple sheets first thing is csv file means it will contain only one sheet it will it won't allow it won't allow multiple sheets csv is just a single sheet and single workbook okay so csv do not support for uh, having multiple sheets in the uh, in its uh, in the framework of workbook okay so that's why xls or xlsx uh, will uh, uh, store the multiple data sets in xlsx workbook format then call the sheets with respect to sheet number or sheet name within giving the specifying uh, specifying the sheet name within double quotations fine now i am using that particular same uh, argument same function to read the data now so far we have used read.csv same working directory and uh, sparrow.csv now let us change the version let us learn new more thing new thing that i have the data stored the data in sheet 3 okay that's why i know well in advance that sheet 3 is uh, the data of mlr is stored in sheet 3 once the data is loaded first way is to have the plot of the data so what is the plot of the how you do that just plot of m um, plot of it's a case sensitive 
plot of ml r so this function will give us a matrix scatter plot this will give us a scatter matrix scatter plot generating generating a square matrix of multiple scatter plots okay uh, once you will understand better once i show you the graphical way of that okay now once the graphical plot is done with that we'll try to understand how to understand that first i let uh, as we are having the practice that first we are understanding the code and then taking that code there and understanding what each code will give us and how to make out figure out of that particular outputs right now once the graphical representation is done the next thing is to observe the correlations across the number of variables which are available in that particular data okay so especially with respect to modeling in regression simple regression and multiple linear regression you have to understand the relational intensity between each field of each predictor variable towards the dependent variable okay as well as of course as well as we have to concentrate on the pair of independent variables also because that I, that concept i am not covering okay the consequences if a pair of independent variables are highly correlated the consequences is nothing but your concept of multi collinearity that i am not covering keeping in the sense that uh, that will come at the masters level program the concept has a different uh, segmentation right now we will focus only on the correlation approach between a set of predictor variables towards the response variable y okay so all the correlations are morning we have seen to compute the correlation the function is called car okay and the function is called car and then this in in this particular discussion i am introducing a new library called library car plot okay so depicting all the correlations of all bivariate correlations across each predictor variable and dependent variable now uh, first what we have to do to depict the co correlation plots to depict the correlation plots first we have to compute the correlation and store it in store it uh, store it in a particular temporary variable now let us for better understanding reduce the dimension of the decimals to three decimals now from here from here the functionality of car plot will understand what is that is car plot first we have to do all the we have to call the particular variable uh, variable temporary variable where all the correlations are stored okay all the correlations are stored now once it is done how to represent that correlations there are different methods what are those methods you have you can represent that correlation in terms of ellipses in terms of circles in terms of shapes okay then when you do this the complete let us take four independent variables and one dependent variable is there so totally five cross five correlation plot will come in both upper triangle and lower in upper layer and lower layer also but if you want to present the correlation plot in only upper layer then you have to add an argument called type with in double quotation upper for uh, just a kind of a small exercise a very tiny exercise you can change this circle to ellipse but double quotation is mandatory within double quotation you can change circle to ellipse circle to shade whatever the uh, type of aesthetic what you want to use that it can be presented now there is small change again in the next comment this will generate only a single layer plot where the correlation is depicted in the form of the color appellate okay but no correlation values will be depicted but now if you want to have the combination of correlation values as well as the color intensity of according to the correlation then you have to use another function which is available in car plot that is called car plot dot mixed because this function will enable us to call to to figure out the depiction of car plot car plot with the two layers one layer will consist of the correlation value the other layer will have the 
uh, functional form of ellipse or circle or shape. How to do that is, yes is the common thing that where all the correlations are stored. Lower, that is a lower panel is colored with black. Okay, and upper panel is, I mean, lower, by default, lower, uh, uh, when we say that lower dot color is equal to black, by default, upper panel will be in circle, by default, okay? Suppose if you want to have upper panel with circle and lower with ellipse, this combination also you can see. What is the advantage of doing this kind of a thing? Uh, I will explain in detail when we see that particular graph, okay? Now, the last argument, the last function, the last line in this thing, uh, indicates a uh, one more interesting feature of this car plot that in the lower panel in the lower panel number upper panel circle okay automatically basing on the correlation negative positive the colors will change okay now what we do is what we do is we'll start do understanding this correlation plot then we'll move to then we'll move to the uh, regression fitting, okay? Now, where is my studio? This is here, yeah. Fine, let me load the library, read Excel. I'm loading the data. Data is loaded here. It has five variables with 14 observations. Let us have the view of the data. It is denoted by Y, X1, X2, X3, X4. Okay, fine. Now, let us have the plot of MLR. This is what it looked like. This is what I said is matrix scatter plot. Let me zoom out for new screen. Yeah, see this. This is the scatter plot. You have multiple bivariate scatter plots, okay, in this matrix scatter plot, okay. Now, this is the uh, what you say uh, one particular uh, narrow, I mean, confined scatter plot between y and x1. Increasing values of x1 to some extent have some sort of a relation with increasing values of y, but there is some commonality at a particular value of x1 there are multiple y values now look at x2 to y this is the common area of interest the first row this is the common area of interest right now x2 to xy there is a, a nice trajectory that as increasing values of x2 increasing values of y is also observed now look at the x3 x3 and y some sort of a decremental but totally scattered out there is no pattern a gradual decreasing pattern is not noticed but data is spread around this coordinate axis indicating that x3 is somewhat weakly correlated with respect to y now look at x4 x4 is a, is having a nice gradual decrement of y values now what we understand here is x is moderately correlated, x1 is moderately correlated, x2 is somewhat in a better way it is correlated with y, x3 is very weakly correlated because the scatterness of the data points with respect to y. Now x4 is also betterly in a better manner it is correlated but it is negatively correlated that is increasing values of x4 will have a decremental values of x y y okay now with this snapshot of matrix plot what we have to observe interpret is that x1 x4 are sorry x2 and x4 are mod, are correlated in a better manner with the positive and negative correlations respectively but x1 has a moderate positive correlation x3 is weakly correlated with a dependent variable so with this notion, what we can understand is that uh, is that the model may have a better uh, implementation with X2 and X4 and a very weak contribution with X3 since the data are scattered around. Okay, this is the uh, perception what we have got with this particular data. 
Okay. Now let me go a little ahead with uh, with our studio. Right. Now let us start building the correlation plot. Now see the difference. How the what are the differences? You will come to know that we'll witness with respect to matrix scatter plot and the difference of cot plot. Okay, here, one of the limitation of this scatter plot, what is that? We cannot know the degree of relation. Just we can know the pattern of uh, coordination between the x, y axis, but degree of relation, we cannot make it very clearly with respect to scatter plot. But with the help of cot plot, with the help of the correlations depicting the cot plot, we can figure out both the intensity as well as degree of correlation that we'll see here. Library core plot is loaded, computer correlations are computed. See, X1 is around 70% correlated with Y and the highest correlation is observed. That's what I said. Highest correlation is observed with X2 and highest negative correlation is observed with X4 and correlation is very weak, that is around 0.56 that two in a negative correlation. These are all observations what we have made, but these values are the supporting numerical quantities that helps us to coordinate with this graphical presentation and to the number, okay? So this is how you have to bridge the observations which you, which you made with respect to graph and with respect to numbers what you got with a method. Now let us build a curve plot. Now I'm calling the S and method circuit. This is the curve plot. Looking at first look, it looks clumsy, right? Okay, we'll make it a little better. I want to disable the lower part. Yes, this is more meaningful, right? Now, now look at the first row. Look at the first row. Uh, ignore the diagonal elements. Now X1. What is the correlation of X1? C, according to the correlation posit mag and uh, degree of correlation and magnitude, coloring appellates are given. If it is negative, it will slightly, it will slowly start with gradual red, pale red, and it will become dark. Okay. Now, similarly, if it is positive, it will start with pale blue and moderate blue, and then it will go to dark shade of the blue color. Right? It's quite interesting to understand and learn new things like this. Now 0 0.701, it is moderately correlated. So 0.7 is somewhere here. So this is the color appellate it will take and fix it here. Even this circle dimension also, see? Even it is, this X2 is betterly correlated than X1 to Y, right? X2 is somewhat better than X1 to Y, right? Now the color has changed a little dark. Okay, now look at X3. It is negatively called. Negative means it will go to red color, 0.56, somewhere here. This color will take here. Since it is 0.5, it will take half of the portion. Now it is 0.81, it will take a dark shade color with a bigger circle than the X3. Okay, so what we are trying to tell here is according to the degree of correlation, the color and intensity is shown. Okay, now. Here we are getting magnitude with respect to color, intensity with respect to the correlation value, right? Now let us move a little and you see the other values, X3 and X1, X3 and X1, where it is? X3 and X1, this minus, minus 0.835, okay? Now X2 and X4, little more darker because it is very close to one, it has taken the exact dark shade of the maroon. Okay, so like this, and now you see 0.193, very weak correlation. It has small circle with very pale color of red. Okay, now uh, let us do one more thing using mixed thing. Yeah, now we got both numbers and the graph. Okay, this 0 0.96 minus 96 corresponds to this, minus 0.19 corresponds to this. 0.26 is a positive, but weak correlation corresponds to small and pale color circle like this. And let me try to explain one more interesting point here. And the lower circle, lower panel, I have a ellipsis and upper panel about the 
circles and degree of correlation. See, in general scatterness, scatter plot, we have to look for the vertical axis, horizontal axis of the data spread and vertical axis of this particular ellipse. We should try to uh, uh, expect that the vertical axis of this ellipsoid should be as closer as possible. Means, meaning to that, if the vertical axis is smaller as possible, it indicates that it has, it has the sample of data points exactly in and around the uh, axis of x, y, rather than spreading up. So here, the vertical axis, you see, here the vertical axis is measured is having little wider than these two. Meaning to that, the data is spread across the XY coordinate along with the horizontal trajectory. Okay, so like this, if you see this, this is very small ellipsoid where the intensity of correlation between X2 and X4 is strongly built in. Okay, so like this, you can have one more thing that coloring according to, uh, displaying the numbers according to the degree of intensity. Okay, so this is one beautiful thing where R will give us the different color appellates, okay, the different colored palettes, color palettes to display your outcomes in a very appealing manner. Okay, now uh, we'll go to another interesting part where you have this thing. The rest of the first few things are seen, but here we have one more correlation plot in GG, that is GG core plot. The additional point here is we can compute the p-values for each pair of correlation. <clears throat> in the morning, we have computed that, right? <clears throat> so core dot test was the function to compute the significance of the correlation obtained between a pair of variables. But here we have multiple pairs of variables and I need to test which pair of uh, which pair is really significant in terms of the relational between x1 to y, x2 to y, x3 to y and so on and so forth. What are the pairs you're going to choose? Now to do that you have a function called You have a function called core underscore p mat. P mat is nothing but create a matrix of p values using the correlation using the correlation. So store it in p dot mat. Okay, then this gg plot car will create again the same similar kind of fitting but with a different appearance. Okay, that we'll see. And here also we can have a circle and upper. The same arguments do come, but the advantage with this GG core plot is you can depict the P, the probability value, whether the correlation is equivalent to zero or not in the same graph. In the previous picture, what we have seen, just we have in the lower panel, we have displayed the num numbers. In the upper panel, we have a different correlation uh, intensities according to the ellipse and circles. Okay, now let us work with this and then we'll come back to the We'll come back to the uh, model fit. It will take a couple of minutes. Now let me load the plot, GG plot loaded, and then I'm computing the correlations. Okay. And the P matrix, these are all the P values. These are all the P values. Look at this. Look at this 0.26. Okay, the correlation between x1 and x2 is 0.26 and it is insignificant. That means the 0.26 is very closer to zero and it tells us to accept the null hypothesis. The true correlation between x1 and x2 is, equal, is almost equal to zero, is almost equal to zero. Similarly, look at this x1 and x4 minus 0.24. Even the p-value is 0. 0 0.383 indicating that the correlation between x1 and x4 is almost equal to zero. Similarly, 0.19, it is 0.508. Similarly, 0.25 that is coming here. 
I mean, that is a replica here. But what about this 0 0.06 is almost zero. So, so in three, in three, uh, in four uh, pairs of variables, we are accepting that the correlation between such pairs x1, x2, x1, x4, x2, x3, and x3, x4 are nearly equal to zero. So these pairs are independent to each other. But now the question is the first row. When you look at the first row, all the these x1, x2, x3, x4 are all significantly observed. What does it mean? Those correlation values are not equal to zero. So x3 represents some moderate level of relation with y. x1 is little better than x3. x4 is in terms of better than x1, x3. And x2 is far better than the remaining three variables. On the whole, all the four variables are quite reasonable in explaining the their own contribution of relation with respect to dependent variable y. Now, where we, the difference will come now? See the plot. Okay, let us make it more meaningful. This is what we go with this uh, GG car plot. Okay. GG car plot. Here also, basing on the intensity of correlation and color, it will have the smaller circle, bigger circle, uh, bigger circle, smaller circle, very smaller circle. Okay, according to that. Similarly, we can have label equal to true, like this. It will come. This is the this is the line of interest. This is the matrix, a row of interest that x1 to y is 0.7 positively correlated. Positive is in terms of red in GG plot. Uh, negative is in blue. Okay. Negatively, moderately negative correlated, some shade, different shade of blue. Little more negatively correlated, strongly negatively correlated, a dark shade of blue. Now, the main difference I'll show you when compared to the usual car plot, what we have done in a couple of minutes back is this. See, so it has crossed the relations it has shown a depiction with a cross mark that these correlations are not significant the correlation between x2 x3 x1 x3 x1 x4 or x3 and x4 are insignificant correlation they are independently related between each other okay now this is the major advantage when you can just have a look at that Right here, we were not able to, in this particular GG plot, we were not able to depict that particular uh, p value significance. We can also compute p value in car plot, but it has some function and small programming. Okay, that also can be shown, but uh, it will create little clumsiness. Okay, but in car, GG car plot, I have two advantages to show that along with the color shades, the numbers will be depicted within the same. Really, uh, this uh, square shade along with its along with its significant value. So all the three varieties of measures: one is color intensity, and the degree of correlation and its significance are depicted in one simple matrix correlation plot. Okay. So with this small introduction about how to see, that's what before you go to modeling, you have to leave with the data. There is a, in the first lecture I've used the call, leave with the data before you plunge into modeling. This is what the practice everyone has to do. Don't straight away start fitting a model. Y is equal to beta naught cap. Y cap is equal to beta naught cap plus beta one cap X one. Like that, don't go slightly fitting it. First, try to get used to the data. What sort of behaviors that different variables are explaining with respect to Y so that these information will support us this uh, total information will support us in final report writing along with the model model and its parameters okay now we will go with the uh, model building model building is very simple just a two line code Okay, model building only this, this much. Okay, to fit a model, you have only one line of R code. <clears throat> and to obtain the ANO of that, you have another function, that's it. 
okay only with the two lines with the two lines you can do that but to do all these things and stepwise regression i mean selection of important variable we need to use a library called mass no need to install this by default once you install the r this packages will be within that installation part mass stands for modern applied statistics with s actually to say the first version of <clears throat> r was with s s plus and r okay the background programming is i think if i am correct it is totally c plus plus okay venables and ripley these two authors <clears throat> they have written a textbook called modern applied statistics with s supported to venables and ripley okay that is a textbook on this you can see it is available in i mean you can see in amazon or any other group web uh, springer i think so publisher okay this mass is nothing but modern applied statistics with s okay now come to this we have loaded the data in mlr right now my dependent variable name is capital y and modulo operator and i have represented a i have represented just a dot next to to modulo operator why so this dot argument will enable to call all the independent variables which are available to the next to the y column or the other way to type is that x1 plus x2 plus x3 plus x4 but why you create some kind of a type of error okay better to use i mean it's it's own to the practice better to use a dot operator so that this dot will enable to call all the independent variables which are available in the data to fit a linear model to estimate and predict y okay this mlr fit will display the model coefficients and then summary will display the significance of the regression that is fitted in the above step along with the r square value and mean square error value <clears throat> okay we will do this and then we'll come back to the variable selection step by step we will do <clears throat> okay library mass and then i'm trying to load the model in mlr fit and this is the model now we have to relate this and this which okay which variable look at here which variable has <clears throat> high amount of correlation with y x2 look at the weightage it has when compared to x1 x2 x3 and x4 okay x2 has the higher value with respect to beta coefficient now which amount which was the next one which was the next one here <clears throat> this is weakly correlated and it has 1.106 okay and x1 is 0.7 that is 2.07 okay and then uh, x3 is 0. Point, minus 0. 0.56 it is it has small beta coefficient in general uh, uh, okay in general how to understand this is the variable which has when we arrange the coefficients in declining declining descending order x2 x1 x4 and x3 okay so this tells that the most supporting variable to estimate y is x2 then x1 then x4 and x3 so the percentage of variation when it comes to the summary plot <coughs> summary of that the total r square is 0.97 so 97.5 around 6 97.6 percentage of variation in explaining why is being supported by x1 x2 x3 and x4 okay and model is observed to be significant what is that model model is nothing but your this one this model this regression is significant enough to speak about that is estimate or predict the y value okay and the mean square error is also minimum <clears throat> the residual degree error is also very minimum okay now when you look at this uh, the total uh, model estimates 
that this is the regression coefficient and its standard error and to test the significance of whether this beta 1 this is called beta 1 this is beta naught beta 2 beta 3 beta 4 okay whether the beta is equal to 0 or not there is another application of t distribution that is test per regression coefficients t is equal to beta j cap by standard error of beta j so when you divide this 2.0699 divided by 0 0.46 you will get this value and it is observed to be significant whereas x3 and x4 they are, they are not significant but here we should not consider directly that x3 x4 are merely not useful to estimate y but since it is a full model we cannot make a clear picture about which variable to be kept in the model which variable to be removed from the model for which we have we have certain measures that is what we call variable selection procedure <clears throat> okay there are three different variable selection procedure outset i am giving forward selection backward selection and stepwise in our code that stepwise is called both okay now uh, the function to decide to decide when you place this cursor i, I repeat again here when you place the cursor <coughs> on this particular function automatically you can see the total code you can see the c of both comma backward comma function so the direction has three uh, three uh, functions i mean three options both means stepwise backward means uh, backward elimination procedure forward means back forward elimination procedure like that you can define so step dot step aic is that the model with minimum aic will be finally displayed as the best model i mean best subset model okay let us run this okay it has built and the results are like this the initial model was with all the variables and final model is also with all the mod variables okay and uh, total summary gives that that all the variables are quietly important quietly important and contributing towards estimating r square uh, estimating the dependent variable retaining the same r square this is one different typical case where we have noticed that no variable got eliminated but there are different different variables uh, different different data sets where the elimination of variables does happen but here my attempt is to make you aware that the final the model which you get at the first attempt should not be will not is not the final model just make you aware that there are some other procedures available to choose the best subset of uh, predictor variables to estimate y in an appropriate manner. Okay, now uh, with this, I'll do one thing. I'll stop. Today, I wanted to give more time with respect to regression. I have given exclusively for multiple in regression. And now the floor is for discussion for 10 to 15 minutes. Exactly, we are on time. Actually, we have to follow this. But anyway, because multiple concepts are, have been covered in the previous sessions, if we take one particular concept, we can do like this. Okay. And uh, the questions have started now. Okay, how to save the output? Then write dot CSV, I said, no, total store the data, I mean, total output into one particular variable and define that variable into a CSV. That morning we have seen. Backward regression, the same will come. Backward regression I have tried, actually. Let me show you that also. Backward I executed and it has given all the variables. Okay, but there will be slight chain and purely depends upon the, uh, what we say, the iteration part and the variables relation with respect to y what is the t value in regression t value in regression is nothing but it will it is used to test the significance of each regression coefficient okay each regression coefficient of the regression model is that's why we have to use this t test okay uh, can we do car plot in gg plot too no, there is separate package exclusively for car plot alone. I don't think so. I have not tried and I, with my knowledge, there is no car plot in ggplot2. Numbers.6 means the, uh, what to say, 
the presentation font size kind of a font size okay no in step wise it is a combination of backward and forward first step it will include all the variables it will identify the significance of that one variable and remaining variable will be eliminated in forward selection one variable will come again that is iteration procedure okay it's a step wise is a combination of both uh, uh what to say forward and backward okay gg stands for grammar of graphics okay when dependent variable is ordinal type how to make it um, okay i'll try to answer this uh, when the dependent variable is ordinal or the independent variable has some ordinal categories then i think a specific type of regression that is what we call ordinal regression will come okay why we have to use r studio rather than r console okay <clears throat> you can use nothing wrong in that you can use nothing wrong in that but only thing is well in advance you install all the required packages but it won't happen in real practice because we don't know because the total exercise will be on need based learning and the query based learning so at what point of time which function is which library is required we don't know and in our studio by default it will choose it will select the mirror and it will install but in our console you have to choose the mirror and again you have to install if you have a lot of patience and to do with that better to to, to do the every exercise in r <clears throat> okay and then and moreover in our studio you will have the previous the graphical presentation that you have generated in our console i don't think so it will have intercept value negative means uh, almost zero because it's a arbitrary data i have taken it might have come like that but even that is nothing but negative intercept means we can start with uh, zero <clears throat> if i am correct wrong please correct me can you execute backward and forward selection again flood priority okay i'll do let me share my screen nothing wrong okay i have done with backward now see initial model and final model i am understanding your question you might have worked with or some of some of you might have worked with uh, with the data set what you have there there may be a variable difference in forward and backward okay but with this particular data all the methods are giving the same output that all variables are included in the model okay how to fit a regression model for a new probability distribution i am not getting your question i explained that the t value <clears throat> see t value has its purpose the t value has its purpose to see, verify whether the obtained estimated beta coefficient that is regression coefficient of a particular variable is equal to zero or not and the adjusted r square is nothing but in the denominator it will have the correct total sum of squares but more often we prefer r square or adjusted r square adjusted r square is more comfortable than r square lasso regression in a simple thing uh, it, it takes uh, uh, what we say uh, i i am I, i may not be able to make it very clear in small thing so i, I make a humble request that uh, uh, kindly ask the questions related to the session okay if you have any advanced questions you can write to me you are most welcome so oh, by this time you are you might have understood that i am ready to answer every question right you have any advanced questions of your own context you can write to me i will address separately kindly raise the questions which are relevant i mean which are to the present context of webinar there are chances there are chances uh, there are chances that where initial model and final model may have all the variables okay it depends upon the 
natural variability observed in the data. As far as what I've considered it is uh, in this uh, step dot AAC is one factor because in which iteration the AAC is minimum at that particular iteration the model will stop and that will be uh, the final model. Here, uh, yeah, that is also can be, but you have to compute the multiple correlation. Okay, you have to do the multiple correlation, then, then you can compute uh, uh, R square. How we did in the morning, in the similar way, we can do in here also. Okay, what is the next question now? BAC is per actually AAC is nothing but AKIK information criteria. This is one goodness of it criterion which is used to select the model's uh, best, I mean, the best model. Bayesian information criteria is another method to have the, uh, what we say, uh, to have the best choice of model selection. Okay. And then how to validate a model? That's good. Good. Use cross validation techniques. Split the data into because here only 15 observations are there. If you split the data, if you split the data, you won't get a fruitful information. Fruitful information, but if your data is around 15 variables and around 500 records or 300 records, then split the data into training and testing. Split around 80% of training data where you build the model and then use the remaining 20% to test the model. This is one way. Or the other way is to use bootstrapping, k code classification, different different methods are there for model validation. But with the existing model, we can claim that the model is a good fit or not using two model adequacy, that is R square and model mean square error. Okay, these two will tell us that uh, model is a good fit or not. But blindly, we should not go with R square. It is better, <coughs> uh, better we can go with uh, I want to say training and testing for model validation. SEM can be done. I should also ask you, I don't know, so far I have not done structure equation modeling in R. I'm trying. Sir, I have not, uh, so far I have not exposed myself with Ramsey's recent test, Kusum graphs. Okay, uh, sorry for that, I cannot answer right now, I, I admit that I went, which the topic which I don't know, I say I don't know. Anyway, uh, you can write to me, I will let you know. I will look into that and I will address your question. You can write to me to email, to my email ID. Again, in this session also I'm sharing my email ID. You are most welcome to write to me. <clears throat> okay, Yogesh Bhaji, you can write to me and I will try to answer your question separately. I will work on that. Don't worry. Explain, explain the interpretation of regression on the basis of hypothesis. See, in regression modeling also, definitely hypothesis testing do play a role, important role. <clears throat> what is that is, testing the significance of regression, you have to fit, you have to, uh, you have to define a hypothesis. Regression, <clears throat> that means, in uh, in the concept of uh, understanding multiple regression, you have total model regression is equal to zero. Okay, and you have another thing testing each regression coefficient. Okay, each regression coefficient is equal to zero or not. Testing subset of equations is equal to zero or not. Like this, there are different different modes where hypothesis testing do have do has its role in regression. Now coming to the context of present example. Uh, the regression was significant in the ANOVA model. Let us see that and discuss so that you will have better understanding what I'm trying to convey. Yeah. Now, this is the significance of the regression, which means that the, uh, the regression, the total model, uh, the regression coefficients are not equal to zero. <clears throat> okay. Now, coming to this, this is for each beta. This is for each beta in the, for every variable. So two types of hypothesis, here also hypothesis is 
beta 1 equal to 0 against beta 1 not equal to 0. Okay, like this for every x2, x3, x4, you have to define uh, by default the hypothesis will be defined that in general h0 beta j equal to 0 against h1 beta j not equal to 0, j equal to 1 to k. k is nothing but how many predictor variables you have, those many uh, hypothesis will get generated. Okay. <clears throat> Okay, so hope I made it more clear now. Any more questions? Yeah, someone asked about uh, if uh, the organizers permit me for uh, five to 10 minutes, I can show with a very quick view, I can show the normal nonlinear regression also. Is it fine with you? Okay, fine. Let me, we'll do, sir, uh, tomorrow morning we'll do with nonlinear regression. I didn't get any response from them. Anyway, no problem. But tomorrow morning we will do the nonlinear regression part first and then we'll move to <coughs> the time series analysis in detail. Okay. And uh, someone has uh, raised a question in day two and day three to how to generate random numbers out of probability distributions like normal, binomial, poison. So tomorrow I will tackle that also. When you have multiple variables, do suggest multiple regression or step by step. See, this is two phases. Multiple variables you have, definitely you have to go with building multiple regression, provided your response variable is of continuous type. Okay, <clears throat> right? Now, the thing is stepwise is another phase of phase in multiple linear regression. Okay, the first thing is, first you will construct a full model. <clears throat> so let me complete the explanation, then you can, uh, then we have one other things, okay. Uh, what I was telling, <laughs> uh, yeah, multiple regression is nothing, first you have to construct the full length model. Then to choose the appropriate best subset of variables which truly really contribute towards estimating y, where you have to go with variable selection procedure that is stepwise, forward or backward. Yeah, I will link the question raised by Rupa Pawan Kumar that both means it is stepwise because the algorithm is a combination of forward and backward. Okay, right. Thank you. Bootstrapping, yeah, tomorrow I will address all these questions in five to 10 minutes after, at the end of the uh, session of day five. Okay, simulation will cover in any session. Uh, not because uh, that's what Mr. Praveen, I, I requested everyone that at higher levels try to mail me separately. I can, I can tell you in that way. Okay, this is focused. What best we can train the budding statisticians that we are trying to make it here. Okay, hope you understand the total, uh, what do you say, the platform for what it is generated. Anyway, I'm so happy that we are, you are raising these many questions. That shows that you are quite uh, very seriously listening to the concept which I'm explaining. Thanks for that. Questions are entertained. Don't worry, I will explain with so patience. Don't worry. <clears throat> No more questions? Thank you. If there are no, any more questions are there? Fine. So Vijay, we can conclude this session. Tomorrow morning by 10.30, we'll meet again. Okay. Bye for now.